Hello and welcome everybody. In this video, we will be talking about power save mechanisms built into the H0 2.11 standard and how have these power save mechanisms evolved over time. There are three different power save mechanisms that we know of. The first one is is legacy power save or commonly referred to as uh, PS pole. The second one is WMM power save, which was a natural evolution of PS pole or a or a much better version of of PS pole, which you can which you might have seen as UAPSD. And the third one is introduced with uh, with with high efficiency PHY or the dot line AX PHY, which is known as target wake time. Both of these are in many ways uh, improvements of the previous one uh, with, with, some, with some salient features going inside uh, each of these, these iterations, which makes it better from the, the last version. Uh, things and and target wake time right especially twt is is a revolutionary or a, or a very radically different uh type of power save mechanism which we will discuss in some time when we uh, talk about twt specifically which not only is responsible for power save operations but also goes a long way in reducing contention of the bss and making it much more deterministic in nature uh signaling a shift from the the classical uh, distributed coordination function to more of a uh, you know an ap controlled environment right so let's look at how legacy power save works so the first step in this process is is done by or is uh, is is started by the the access point in the bss by sending the beacon frames now in every beacon frame the access point kind of denotes to the stations or the specific stations to whom it has traffic buffered right so and it uses an information element called tim or traffic indication map in order to do so the traffic indication map is nothing but uh, can think of it as an array of association IDs to which the AP has traffic buffered. Possibly because, uh, let's say one one possibility is obviously because the, the station is 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 sleeping. Now once it once the station here hears about these these uh, uh, these AIDs, which could be its own AIDs in the in the TIM field it has to get that data from the ap now how it does this is by using a specialized frame called ps pole it sends a ps pole the ap has to acknowledge it back along with data that is intended for the station with a specific information element set to one right we, we call it the more data bit set to one obviously if it has more data uh, coming up after this chunk of data now when it receives this data the station has to acknowledge it back using an ACK frame and then send one more ps pole frame it sends this because the more data bit was set to one in the previous data frame which indicates to the station that okay i still have one some more data which is which is waiting for me at the ap the ap send the ap sends an ack to the to the station and it again sends the remaining data and possibly this time it sends or it sets the more data bit to zero indicating that all the buffered frames that are intended for this aid or for this station has been sent Finally, the station acknowledges the receipt of this data using an acknowledgement frame, which is sent back to the AP. 
one of the obvious problems uh, behind this uh, or inefficiencies of this method is the uh, is the necessity to send these frames right? ps pole here you have a ps pole here and it has to follow and it has to be followed by an ACK. so each one of these these transmissions the station has to contend for the medium and again so it introduces a whole lot of overhead in in the process of the station uh, or, or, the, or the station sleeping and waking up another possible problem in this approach is that it is dependent on the beacon frames right so since the station has to hear a beacon frame and depending upon whether its AID is present in a beacon frame the station has to decide whether to send a PS pole or not so this behavior significantly changes in the next power save mechanism that we are going to look in the upcoming slide and that is WMM power save now one of the changes one of the major changes in in WMM power save uh, which is the next evolution of uh, legacy power save that we saw in the earlier slide is that this is more of a trigger based mechanism Now, what do we mean by this? Now, one of the uh, disadvantages of PS pole or the legacy power save was that it had to depend on the beacon interval, listen for every beacon, and then look in the TIM field, look whether my association ID is present, and then uh, carry out the rest of the process. But in WMM power save, the station can opt to, let's say, solicit data from the AP using a trigger frame. Now this trigger frame can be any data frame or a cost data frame with its power management bit set to zero. Right? So power man management bit set to zero means the station is awake. Power management bit set to one means the station is going to sleep. So we have gotten rid of the, the PS pole frame or a special frame just to uh, to fetch the data from the AP as compared to the previous version of, of, of legacy power safe. So let's see this in action, right? So the client, when, when the client decides to wake up, it sends a trigger frame to the access point. Let's say this is any data frame with uh, the power management bit set to zero. The access point knows that, okay, this guy is now is has has woken up it responds firstly with an acknowledgement and then it sends all the buffered data that was ideally meant for this station as part of a tx op burst right so what this means is that there is no more the necessity for the station to use a specialized ps pole frame as we saw in the earlier example thereby excusing the station from having to contend for the medium every time right? so this is let's say data here data here obviously this data are acknowledged by by an ACK frame which comes from the station back to the AP so this is what I mean by a TX op burst right so this the AP continuously sends the data frame which are intended for this association ID or for the station till it gets another frame from the station another trigger frame let's say or another data frame with its power management bit set to one right so this becomes much more efficient partly because the station or the the, the participants need not use a specialized frame which adds to the overhead of of the entire process and also because the station now need not listen to a beacon frame and 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 be dependent on a beacon interval uh, to determine uh, or to fetch uh, the remaining data that that it wants to fetch from the ap now the final method and the most recent form of uh, power save mechanism and most radically different one is twt or target wake time which uses a scheduling mechanism to actually negotiate a, a sleep interval or a wake interval rather with the with the access point now if you remember the first method we didn't have any scheduling mechanism nor a trigger based mechanism it was purely using a specialized frame called ps pole 
The second method, which was UAPSD or WMM power save, we evolved to a trigger based mechanism. And in TWT, we are evolving further to a scheduling mechanism to, to schedule uh, sleep times and wake times in, in the BSS. Now, this also means that uh, the, the AP here knows all about uh, station A, station B and station C and when are each of these stations going to sleep and when are these going to wake up. Now, there are certain parameters which are exchanged during this negotiation phase. Let's look at some of these, some of the important parameters. The first one is a target wake time. Now, this is the next time in microseconds at which the participating station should wake up, right? So, when should the station wake up? So, this is more concerned with that. The second is the TWT wake interval. It is more to schedule a periodic wake uh, period or a periodic session period rather. Uh, uh, between the station and the AP that the station will keep on waking after let's say so much or so many microseconds. The minimum TWT wake time. So this deals with uh, a duration or a minimum time duration that a station has to stay awake right, from the starting time of the TWT session so as to be able to receive uh, the frames from the AP. right. So this is more concerned with when the, the, the station will wake up. This is more concerned with how often the station will keep on waking up and going to sleep since it defines an interval. And the minimum TW to wake time is the minimum amount of time that the station will stay awake so that it can fetch information from the AP. There are other parameters here uh, which are concerned with TWT channel and then uh, TWT protection mechanisms which we will not discuss uh, in this video. But these are the three main parameters which we should be aware of when, when talking about TWT as a, as a power save mechanism. So there are broadly two forms of uh, the negotiation which, which takes place here or the negotiation or the, uh, or the agreement which takes place here. Right? So the first form of agreement is an individual agreement and the second form of agreement is a broadcast agreement. Right. We'll talk about individual agreement here. So an individual agreement is a negotiation uh, in which the station can agree with the AP on a on a common wake scheduling, right? uh, allowing the station to wake up only when required. Hence, to uh, it, it it minimizes energy consumption and also reduces contention in the BS, right? So that's that's one more key term here, right? So if I have if the AP has control and visibility of every station and how long is each of these stations going to sleep and it has an active role in negotiating it, it can help a lot in bringing down the contention of the BSS, right? So this is where they are the BSS or the overall nature of the BS shifts from, uh, from, from a DCF based, uh, you know, random access method to uh, you know, more of a deterministic way of 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 controlling who gets access to the medium, or rather, when uh, the the specific station gets access to the medium. TWT is or goes a long way in actually optimizing the BSS for devices like IoT, which which do not frequently communicate with the with the AP and uh, which do, which do not have a large payload usually and and but but has a very high requirement to conserve battery right so twt is possibly the most efficient way of power safe mechanism that we have today not only because it it helps in a better way to save power because of this ability to schedule the the wake times with the ap but also because the AP has a visibility of which station will talk, which station is going to sleep and can play a role in reducing contention of the overall BSS. Thank you for listening to this video. And please stay tuned for the next video in the series.